Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing what happens if you try to bleach human blood. So the idea for this video actually came from the comments section of my previous video. Somebody commented and said, hey, can you bleach your own blood? Will the blood be colorless? And really respect you brain, sir. I'll take that as a compliment. So I've done a few cool videos before bleaching things. I showed that you could bleach strawberries completely white by soaking strawberries in bleach. Strawberry, raspberry. So I'm gonna let it soak for 24 hours. Let's come back and see what it looks like. 24 hours later. Okay, it's now been 24 hours and look at that, the whole strawberry turned white. And then I also showed how cool it is if you pour bleach in Coke, you can turn the Coke completely clear. Whoa! So now it's still fizzy, but it's just bleached. But the question is, what happens if you pour bleach in blood? Will the blood just turn clear like the Coke did? Or will it turn kind of a milky white or not turn at all? There's only one way to find out. And luckily enough, I happen to have a vial of my own blood lying around. Now I had this from a previous video where I saw what happened to blood in a vacuum chamber. So I had a medical professional draw my blood and I tested if blood actually boiled in a vacuum. And luckily enough, after that, I saved the blood in my freezer in case it might come in handy in the future. And sure enough, today is that day. So now let's go ahead and see what happens if I try to bleach my own blood. Okay, let's put in about the same volume as the blood in there. Let's see what happens. A little more. Whoa. Looks like it just all clumped together. So it looks like it formed a solid. You can see you can see on the side here is the bleach, but then this clump of solid here. But it might be changing color a little bit. It's really fizzing. Look at that. Whoa. What is going on? Whoa, it's hot too. Whoa, it's warm. What is going on? I'm not sure what's going on here. So it's fizzing up. See all those little bubbles coming off of it? So yeah, there's definitely a lot of reaction going on here. So the bleach is reacting with the blood pretty quickly. So quick, in fact, that this is warm to the touch in my hand. But you can see the blood that's clumped together is now turning kind of white. So this was at room temperature before and it got up to around 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So around body temperature. Yeah, so it's definitely clumped up in there. But it looks like the clumps are beginning to bleach. So basically, even though this tube had an anticoagulant in it, it couldn't withstand the extreme change in pH when I poured the bleach in it. And so all of the blood almost instantly coagulated. I'm gonna add a little bit more. So look at this, all of these uh, red coagulated blood chunks in there are now turning to white. So the gas coming off here has a very strong chlorine smell, so it's most likely chlorine coming off of this. There's probably a little oxygen coming off of it also. The chlorine can come from bleach when you mix it with acid. That's why you never want to mix a chlorine bleach with any other acidic cleaning compounds because it creates chlorine gas. Okay, so it's been about 20 minutes now, and you can see now the blood is completely bleached. You can see the solids have now sunk to the bottom, and it's all white here. So this is what it looks like when you bleach blood. Let's try to get it out of there and see what it actually looks like. Okay, let's get rid of the extra bleach. Okay, 
So there you go. That's what bleached blood looks like. So it has a really weird texture, kind of like a type of clay or something. But basically what this is, is just now completely broken down red blood cells that have been bleached. So blood is red because it has hemoglobin in it. And hemoglobin is made out of proteins called hemes. And the hemes are actually the thing that causes the blood to be red. So I'm slightly surprised that the bleach was able to bleach the blood because one of the main reasons that the blood is red is because it has iron in it. And if you've used bleach before to clean stuff, you know that it doesn't work very well with rust stains. That's because bleach works well to break double bonds, but the color that comes from rust isn't due to double bonds. And so it takes a different type of chemical, chemical reaction to get rid of rust stains. But it looks like the reaction that happens with the heme protein is enough to release that iron so it doesn't have that red color anymore. Well, there you go. Now we know what happens when you bleach blood. It bleaches it. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, remember to hit it now and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. Leave me any comments or questions you have in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And head over to theactionlab.com to order your Action Lab subscription box. If you get the box, you can do many of the same experiments that you've seen me do in my vacuum chamber. And thanks again for watching today and I'll see you next time.